Beastly Gamer original. What's going on, guys? Beastly Gamer here. Thank you all so much for joining me today. All right, so now the hype train for PlayStation meeting has died down. I'd like to take a look at what the reveals and information from the meeting actually mean for PlayStation, and also what the future of PlayStation might be when looking at the recent reveals of the new PlayStation 4 Slim, as well as the more powerful PS4 Pro system. We all watched it. The PlayStation meeting held on September 7th was underwhelming, to say the least. I don't know about you, but I've grown accustomed to being excited and hyped for PlayStation events, and the idea of a new PlayStation being revealed really gets me hyped. I don't know. Now that I think about it, was I expecting too much? Did I expect new reveals of games and additional tweaks to the rumors previously leaked about PlayStation Pro? Yes. But honestly, I may be the one at fault for expecting the world from every PlayStation event. You can't get that lucky. In actuality, the PlayStation meeting was quaint, quiet, straightforward, and without any real wild moments. The issues I had with the meeting were that I felt Sony didn't show us anything that wasn't already leaked about the new consoles. They didn't show any exciting games or even reveal anything noteworthy in my opinion. Instead we got a PS4 Slim, a Pro PS4, and a 10 minute expose on the joys and wonders of HDR and 4K resolution. We got a few slides that attempted to show the contrast of these resolutions, as well as gameplay comparisons with games running in standard PS4 mode, as well as games running on the new and truly beefier PS4 Pro console at 4K utilizing HDR high dynamic range. The thing that was lost in translation in my opinion was that streaming the meeting on PCs and TVs, most which are running at 1080p, can never do justice to what Sony was trying to convey. It was simply a PS4 game as far as the visuals went to the average person watching the event on live stream. But now after the smoke is cleared and with a little reflecting, I have a few thoughts I'd like to share on what this meeting means for PlayStation gamers now and in the looming future. The PS4 Slim, which is now the standard PS4, is everything a traditional PlayStation gamer could want. A slimmed down, even sleeker PS4 with all the power of the original and a cheaper entry point. This console isn't a problem to me, and actually, if I didn't own so many, I'd probably consider buying one. The PS4 Pro, on the other hand, is a whole nother story, and while I wish PlayStation sold the community more on why it's necessary to buy one of these, I actually see the value in it as a sort of future-proofing move to keep the PS4 relevant as TVs and technology move forward, allowing more depth and detail and image quality. The PS4 Pro has a price point that is very respectable as well, at $399. This was the cost after all of the PlayStation 4 at its original launch in 2013. But the PlayStation 4 Pro offers twice as much power as the PS4 as well as the ability to play games and live stream in 4K. This doesn't come without problems though. Sony's arch nemesis Xbox recently revealed the very well received Xbox One S, which has notable improvements over the PS4 Slim and even improvements over the PlayStation Pro. The Xbox One S has an improved GPU which has already shown improvements over the original console, as well as 4K streaming and Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player built in, as well as HDR capability. All this for the price of $299 does present a major problem for Sony. After all, how can you sell a competing console with virtually none of the bells and whistles of the Xbox One S for the same price? 4K streaming, as well as upgrades in hardware and even a built-in 4K Blu-ray player will keep the Xbox One in the conversation of curious gamers looking for an entry point into the 8th generation, and some would say that these hardware additions will sway many gamers looking for the most bang for their buck when it comes to the potential of watching movies and streaming in 4K as well as having access to the latest in console gaming. With the new PlayStation 4 being Sony's new base model, they're going to have to work very hard to make people buying a console this holiday see more value in their slim model than they would in Microsoft's Little White Monster. When it comes to hardware, the PlayStation Pro is even lacking when it's compared to the Xbox One S. The new PlayStation packs a ton under the hood when it comes to power, that's for sure. Sporting an AMD 4.2 teraflop GPU, this Pro model's power surges when compared to the 1.8 teraflops of the original PlayStation 4. It also supports HDR, which is high dynamic range, which all PS4s will soon have after a patch is released. But the big drawback of the Pro when compared to the Xbox One S model is that the Xbox One S actually has a 4K Blu-ray player built in, while the PlayStation Pro only supports traditional Blu-rays, making it pale in comparison to the arguably much weaker Xbox One S model. 
At $399, the Pro does seem like a great console to buy for those looking to get in on PS4 gaming at its highest level without actually breaking the bank. When we think of it, it's only $100 more than the Slim, but it boasts significant power advantages. Sony really has their work cut out for them though in my opinion. The new base model PS4 as well as PSVR and the Pro model will all be in the hands of consumers very soon, and that's a lot for Sony to focus on while trying to be clear with their message to consumers on why we need their products. I think this could be the moment that Microsoft could steal some of that PlayStation Thunder. With their laser focus reveal of their consoles at E3, as well as their S model, which is in some ways more modern than the Pro PlayStation, it's a great time for Microsoft to get out there and make clear exactly what they're offering that the competition isn't. As long as the perception of the Xbox Scorpio isn't tarnished, gamers around the world will continue to sing the praises of six teraflops. And if the perception is that Microsoft's new 2017 console will be the best one on the market for gamers next year, that'll shake the foundation of many gamers who are considering buying a PlayStation 4 Pro. With all that said, though, what's the future of PlayStation? The thought that the Pro is going to be it for a while just doesn't jive well with me. There are constant advancements in hardware and technology, and with PlayStation being Sony's main source of income, I find it extremely hard to believe that they would just willingly hand that legacy over to Xbox without a fight. Something tells me there's a lot more going on than meets the eye when it comes to PlayStation. I think that with Microsoft revealing their hand with the Scorpio over a year in advance, that they may have given Sony exactly what they needed to keep their lead. With Microsoft announcing the Scorpio at E3, a 6 teraflop monster that runs games in the highest fidelity possible, they halted gamers and made us all notice and respect the future that Microsoft was bringing. We all think about 2017 as the year of the Scorpio, and the year when things will change for gamers, a time for true advancements in the way that we see games and how beautiful they can truly be. But what if Sony does the same thing? What if Sony announces a PlayStation 5 next year, right before the Xbox Scorpio's release, and they slate it for a 2018 release, boasting more power than the Scorpio, new exclusive content that takes full advantage of the hardware as well as baked in backwards compatibility? Sony has already went on the record and stated that the PlayStation 5 will be a thing. Why on earth would they not be thinking about that now? If they do announce a true 9th generation console that not only plays PS4 games but also plays games that have been tailor-made for the new hardware, then more than likely gamers looking at the Scorpio, a console that will not be getting any exclusive content and will only be getting 4K versions of Xbox One games, and they'll stop and say, I want the actual 9th generation system and not the Xbox One that looks much better and plays in 4K. This is all, of course, speculation on my part. I don't believe that the PlayStation Pro and the Xbox Scorpio are the end of this thing. I do believe that iterative changes are continuing to happen, and Sony is going to come with a PlayStation 5 at some point in the future. The gaming climate is changing faster than we can imagine, and on some level, I think Sony and Microsoft are already planning their next moves. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next year, that's for sure. Will the PlayStation 4 Pro be a big seller? Will PSVR be as big as I think it'll be? Will the Xbox One S regain some footing over the new slim PS4? Will the Scorpio reign supreme over the Pro? Will Sony let Microsoft take over with the Scorpio? Or will they make an earth-shattering announcement before its release? These are all questions in the back of my mind, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Please let me know how you feel in the comments. I know, uh, and I agree, the PlayStation meeting was extremely underwhelming. It doesn't take away the fact of what Sony's revealing, what they're, what they are putting out there. $400 machine that plays games in 4K. It's really, really hard to beat. I believe that probably within the next 18 months, Sony is going to reveal the PlayStation 5. And once that happens, and we've got developers working on PS5 games and not PS4 games that run on a new PS4, that's when things are going to change. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you're interested in any of these new consoles, be it the Xbox One S, the Xbox Scorpio, the PS4 Pro, or the PlayStation Slim, which is the new PS4. At this moment in time, the only thing I'm really concerned about is PlayStation VR, uh, until I see something that I truly, truly feel like I must have, but I'm dying to know what you guys think in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up, show support for the channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and tell all your friends about me. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Take a, 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 take a,